Hey guys, Jason here. Welcome back to the channel. We're starting the book club back up. This is the first video. Um, so our book from January was The Cypher by Kathy Koja. Um, before we get into that, I want to just talk about the future of the book club a little bit. Also, please excuse the dryer. My wife is doing laundry right now. Anywho, here's my plan. So for February, March, and April, if you go way, way back to before I took my break, um, we were reading My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones, and I never made that video. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to read My Heart is a Chainsaw in February. We're going to read the sequel, Don't Fear the Reaper, in March. And then we're going to finish it all off with the third book in the trilogy, Angel of Indian Lake, in April. That book is set to come out end of March, March 27th, something like that, so it'll be like perfect kind of timing for it. But anyway, please join me in this little read-along. And then after that, after April, we'll go back to doing like the voting thing. If you guys want, I don't know, let me know if you want, or if you want me to just keep choosing books, that's cool too. Without further ado, let's talk about the cipher. Uh, this book was really weird. I really liked it. Kathy Koja. This was her first novel. I read one other book by her, Bad Brains, a couple years ago, and also really enjoyed it. And I I really like her style. It's very, like, poetic and, um, like, dreamy and weird. Um, she's got this thing about, like, starving artists uh, in this book and also in Bad Brains. The characters in this book are really, are really, like, depraved starving artisty. They're, they're just like on the fringes, let's say that. Premise. Basically, this guy, Nicholas, he's like the main character. To the story is completely told from his perspective. It's first person. His girlfriend, Nakoda, although she's not really his girlfriend, but whatever. She's a waitress. They find this hole in the ground in their apartment building, or in his apartment building, that kind of goes to nowhere. It's just a hole in the ground mysterious hole. They call it the fun hole and they kind of become obsessed with it. It's odd because it kind of defies reality. Like it doesn't, it's a hole, but it doesn't go anywhere. It's on the second floor, I think, of the apartment building, but like it doesn't go down. It kind of reminds me of like um, in House of Leaves, how they had that hallway that just like it went on forever and ever and ever and ever. Um, it's like that. It's like this endless bottomless hole that's just, it's just nothing. And I guess that's the setup. We're gonna get into spoilers here, so if you haven't read it, you guys, you can go ahead and stop watching. So yeah, after they find the hole, they start to like do weird experiments on it. Like first, Nico and Nakoda is very like gung ho about this. Nic Nicholas kind of doesn't is afraid of it, sort of, um, which he should be. But they start to like experiment, right? So they get a jar full of bugs and they stick it in there. The bugs like mutate and then explode into bits and pieces and they kind of try to put the pieces back together. But clearly like the, something was changed there. And then they do it with a mouse, kind of same thing. And then they do some weird sex stuff with like the body parts of the mouse. <laughs> and that was a weird scene. <laughs> there's, a lot of, there's a lot of stuff like that in this book. And um, it's a very sexual book. They eventually they get a they get a they get a human hand from a guy named Useless, who works at a morgue. They're very like nonchalant about how they get this hand. They're just like, oh yeah, it's a hand. I got a hand from this guy. He can get us hands. He can get us body parts. He's just a guy who can get us hands. It was interesting how like casual they were about being able to get human body parts so easily. There was also a one-off kind of weird line about how, like. Previously, Nakoda lived in Florida and used to go to, like, chainsaw fights. It was, like, two sentences, and when I read it, I was like, wait a minute. And I had to go back and read it again, because I didn't know if that was what, I, like, I was like, did I just read that? And it was weird, because it never gets mentioned again. It kind of made me wonder if, like, there's some unreliable narrator stuff going on, or if, like, that's true, or, like, what happened? We don't really, we don't really know much about any of the characters' pasts, really. Yeah, so they, they continue to escalate these um, kind of experiments where they put stuff in the hole and it, like, transforms or comes alive or whatever. They put a, a video camera down there and kind of film what's going on. Nakoda just can't stop watching the video. She loves it. She's obsessed with it. 
Nicholas, like, falls in. And this is another weird thing uh, that I kind of... Maybe I, maybe I misunderstood what happened. But he falls in, and then the chapter ends. And then the next chapter, he's just, like, at work. And I was just like, what happened? He fell in the hole. How did he get out of the hole? I don't recall, like, an explanation, really. It was just, like, suddenly he was at work. And he had this, like, miniature version of the fun hole growing on his hand, basically. And then from there, there's a couple new characters. Randy, who I thought was really cool. I really liked Randy and his girlfriend. Vanessa was kind of like the voice of reason. She was the one that's like, oh, this is a bad idea and very weird kind of the whole time. Randy's cool. I like Randy. He's kind of like the bodyguard sort of character. He kind of um, hangs out and keeps the peace. It gets especially important later um, because Nakoda's crazy and kind of starts this weird like cult almost around the fun hole and around... Uh, Nicholas specifically with the video she starts showing everybody and you come, come to find out that everybody who watches it sees something a little different Nicholas always sees the same thing he always sees this like kind of creaturey type thing it scares him he doesn't really want anything to do with it but apparently everyone else sees something different every time they watch it which is why Nakoda is just obsessed with watching it over and over and over and over and over again and she shows it to everybody and she's like she like creates this almost cult around it. Nicholas eventually finds out that the fun hole, like, doesn't do anything for anybody else except for him. Like, he's the one that can, like, levitate over it. And and the whole thing culminates into this crazy thing where he locks himself in there and the cult is outside and they're trying to break in and there's, like, a, like a, like a plaster sculpture of his head that's talking. It's, like, it's... It just, it's wild. It gets really crazy. Yeah, he, he ends up, he ends up killing Nakota. He, like, chops her feet off. Um, or, like, punches her feet off. And, <laughs> and then she dies. And then, it's kind of ambiguous. It's a strange book. I kind of want to, I kind of want to reread it. I really enjoyed it. I thought the characters were really interesting. I thought Nakoda was just like a kind of a bad person. Like she was always just egging him on. And Nicholas uh, is pretty much drunk the entire time. I'm pretty sure he's an alcoholic. He's a poet, but doesn't really write poetry. He works at a video store. There was one thing in particular that really reminded me of Bad Brains. So Bad Brains is uh, basically about this like a uh, guy who does paintings and he's painting this these like silver this like silver figure that he keeps seeing. He has a traumatic brain injury and he's constantly like hallucinating this silver figure. So silver stuff and like chrome stuff is kind of all over. Hey kitty. So at one point Nicholas's hand hole starts just like oozing out these like silver like cubes which I kind of it made me think of Bad Brains a little bit. I would like to read more Kathy Kodra books. I don't really know what else she's written. If anyone's read anything else by her and has any suggestions, please let me know. I don't really have too much else to say. I guess this I I guess this is a horror book, but I wouldn't say it was like super scary. It was just more like head fucky. It was very weird. Tell me what you guys thought in the comments. We can continue this discussion. We can also continue this discussion on our Discord server, which I will link. I'm assuming that a lot of people who used to frequent that uh, probably gave up. Um, but come on back. So join us in reading My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones in February. We will talk about it in the beginning of March. With that, I will leave you, and until next time...